everybody, and welcome to the PGL CSGO Championship Series Finals. I am so excited for this matchup. We have Fnatic and TSM. Wow, what a game it'll be. What a series. I can't wait for it. And I bet you guys can, so I will uh, call out the first team on stage. Team Fnatic! Now you guys have one hell of a match ahead of you. TSM has proven to be pretty strong against your roster. So what are you guys going to need to do in this final matchup to come away victorious? Uh, I think last time uh, we overprepared against TSM. We, uh, we tried to anti strength them too much and not play our own game. So uh, we're going back to basics, just playing, uh, you know, our high individually skill-based standards and uh, with Pronax mid-round calling and having anti strats I guess, uh, as a backup plan. And um, yeah, it's going to be an exciting game. Obviously, uh, TSM, strong opponents. They've shown this tournament. They, they can beat everyone. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be an exciting game. As a team that spent a lot of time on the final stages at events, do you have any advice you want to offer them before they come on up here? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, just play your own game. I mean, have, a, have fun, I guess that's, uh, that's the major point. If you're as relaxed and, uh, you know, joking around as actually as you do in practice, then, uh, you know, uh, you get, don't get affected by uh, the massive pressure of a crowd or, uh, yeah, the pressure of, I guess, yourself and your expectations. Good guy Devil Walk gives actual advice to TSM. Cheers to that. Give it up for Team Fnatic. Okay. Now, oh, put your hands together for T.S.M. You guys came out swinging. That was some aggressive hand action there. So uh, did, you, did you guys listen to that advice from Devil Walk that he just gave? Honestly, I didn't hear what he said, but uh, so. <laughs> right out the window with that. Well, you guys told us yesterday, this is your first time on the final stage. This is your first time competing up here. What do you guys feel like you're going to have to do to beat Fnatic? The same thing as we did when we beat them in their tournament uh, previously, like just play our game, take one round at a time, play confident, just like try not to do too many mistakes because that's going to be uh, going to be punished by them. So well, you guys got a lot of practice winning against this team. Uh, is there any advice you would maybe want to give them? Well, no, I don't really want to give them any advice. I just hope for a good game. And I hope that everyone out here will enjoy the game as well and everyone watching at home. So that's just good luck to everyone. And that's, that's it. Excellent. Give it up for TSM! Are they looking strong to you, Sebastian? It's their first final, and uh, I've seen that they have a lot of fanboys over there. They've earned themselves a lot of fans during this tournament. Let's see if they can make fans of our analyst desk. It's Natu, Thorin, and Richard Lewis. Hi, guys. Uh, good evening to everyone, and uh, good evening to you. Uh, my fellow uh, analysts here, we've got, of course, Thorin and Natu over there. As Rachel said, this is the big one. And what a story we've got here. We've got, of course, Fnatic, arguably the number te uh, one team in the world. Not according to you, obviously, Duncan. Uh, but um, going up against TSM with the real underdogs coming into this tournament. And uh, they've made it all the way to a grand final. And not only that, they did it through the upper bracket and will have a map advantage. So is this TSM's time? Well, that's the real question, I think, because we already know who Fnatic are. They've had all these titles. They've been the team of this kind of era of CSGO. We already know the kind of championship form they have, the caliber. The real question to me is more about TSM because we know what Fnatic's going to bring. Can TSM make this a fight or will TSM roll over like they have in the past? I mean, they, were, they, they did technically make a final already when they made the Copenhagen Games final. First of all, it wasn't really a super stacked team tournament like this. And also, they got kind of taught in that final you know, there's a difference between a really good team and a champion. VP taught them that because VP is one of the great yeah. teams. Now, 
will they actually be ready to kind of graduate today and become a great team themselves? Because that, that's the real question to me, because I, I kind of know what Fnatic's about. I want to see what TSM's about, and this is the time to prove it. If they're ever going to win, it has to be now, surely. They've already beaten Fnatic. They're one game up in the final. They get the first veto. Everything's in place. If not now, when? Yeah, if not in this manner, then how? Yeah, absolutely. Those are the questions. I think we're going to bring the bracket up uh, for you guys at home, so you can just have a look at this. Natu, uh, obviously, You've been in a tournament or two in your time. Help contextualize the results and uh, what it all means. Talk us through TSM's incredible journey to the final here. Yeah, they have not dropped a single map. I don't, I don't think ever, anyone would have expected that coming to the tournament. Nope. And uh, no, I mean, it, it has definitely been their rise here in this tournament. A lot of good plays. Just the, um, I think for them at this, in this match, they just got to have a continuation of, of what, what it's been like throughout this weekend and just not think about the circumstances, not think about it being, you know, a major final, not, not the way that Thorin put it. Like, that's yeah. not the way they need to think about it. They just need to think about it as another game, have a lot of fun, like Devil Walk said, enjoy the moment and um, just go have fun. Well, I mean, TSM were all over social media last night. They were like, yeah, we've made it to a final, we broke the curse. But ultimately, in the grand context of their development as a team, getting to a final that only had four teams in it here, uh, if they were to choke at the final, I mean, people would still say the curse was in place, wouldn't they? The problem is, yeah, like you're saying, first of all, it's, it, it, even though they're the best teams in the world, just getting to the final is not enough. Like, the whole point is, when you look at this team, you never went, like, yeah, the problem is because they'd never made a real final. That was the story. It was always like, oh, I was choking the semis. But the real story, if they'd never made a final, would be like, why haven't they won a tournament? You look at the lineup, you don't go, oh, they, they should be good enough to make a final. You go, they should have already got titles. They should have had like a great day, like a VP. Okay, VP's not the best team ever, but they have the tournaments where they're on fire. They get to the final, they win. Problem is TSM, no matter what form they were in, always did the choke there. So to me, it's not enough to get to the final. It's not enough to be like, oh, great run. And like, you know, maybe next time. Like now it has to be, it has to be today. Because if not, I, I can't see how they're ever going to become champions. I see now who's looking to interrupt there. Well, well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the thing is, you, you mentioned they were pretty happy on social media yesterday. Yeah. I mean, I hope they're not content with this situation. Finally no. making a big final like this. They gotta have Eye of the Tiger here and like really drive for that victory. Mm. Well, we'll go into the players that have made it happen, but we are gonna do the map veto. Just before we do that though, I got given something for you, Thorin. I'm hoping the camera's gonna come back. So, it's uh, not so. No, it will, it will, it will, it will. They'll come back. Uh, a fan brought us this. Apparently it's uh, a monkey in a palm tree. They, uh, they can't yeah, see it. Doesn't, so. it doesn't matter. You'll have home. to take his word for it. Yeah, guys. yeah. Uh, uh, it uh, is uh, hilarious. I'll describe it. Would have, been, would have been a great clip for YouTube. Yeah, but we, unfortunately, nah, we'll never get they've to see it. it they've ruined it, right? Thanks, so. production team. You know, it's that synergy that we've had all weekend long. <laughs> I think it's made this a great event, you know. So, uh, you know. We'll, we'll, we'll it's go. still on All of Them. Don't yeah, worry. Yeah. We're not even talking about All of Them, but just yeah. keep it on our device as well. Yeah, cool. Here's what we'll do, though. Let's talk about the map vetoes, and I will bring this. Man alive. Yeah. I will bring. I will bring the punky and the palm tree team in a second. Okay, yeah. But anyway, so we did get the map vetoes before we come on live. TSM went with a cobblestone ban, first of all. I think after we, how we saw Fnatic demolish uh, Ninjas in Pajamas yesterday on cobblestone, that yeah. probably is a smart ban right at the top. Yeah. It was unreal. They got 14 rounds on CT. Remember, the thing about that map was, I have to emphasize this every time, after the rework, you, it was a map where you can get a lot of T rounds, and they got 14 CT rounds yeah. against one of the best teams in the world, so I wouldn't want to play that whatsoever if I'm TSM. Yeah, like I told you before that, when, when we were discussing the maps yesterday for that Fnatic NIP game, it's, it is Fnatic territory right now, and they, they play a very, very good cobblestone. Yeah. Um, and uh, then Fnatic go in and ban Nuke, of course, which... Yeah, uh, very obvious, obvious one yeah. There. yeah, that's an obvious one, nothing too much to talk about. thought this was interesting, TSM removing cash for... Uh, sorry. Uh, removing cash from Fnatic there. Uh, yeah. We know Fnatic are good on cash, but TSM are no slouches on it themselves. Is that almost like an admission of Fnatic's superiority on that map? Yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of this move, actually, because that's another thing that TSM got. As a result of being in the final from the upper bracket, they not only got the one map advantage, they only have to win two maps in theory, but they got the second veto. Mm. Now with that, okay, yeah, after yesterday, I don't mind moving Cobblestone, that, that's fine. But instead, you want to take away, in theory, one of Fnatic's best maps here. Now, cash is one of their best maps, but I think TSM is a very good cash team. I, yeah. In fact, I, I would have liked to see these two teams play. That's, that would be one of the more questionable maps that I think TSM could have won. Yeah, and I, I mean, Mirage, is, I guess, is what you're probably trying to... That, that would be my in, yeah. initial veto, you know. Yeah. Why, why would you want to play Fnatic or Mirage? I mean... It's not even really a TSM map. Mm, yeah, Fnatic is very, very So that's, that's unusual there because, yeah, like... A, listen, if I had to bet, I would have said that TSM would think cash is a very strong map for them. Meanwhile, yeah. I, would, I would think they'd even admit we're not the best on Mirage, but they're willing to gamble it, so... 
shows maybe they have a different thinking about. Maybe they think they have something they haven't shown us on Mirage. I don't know. That could be a question. I mean, you've forwards. talked about the importance of Matt Vitos here in in-game leadership. And, and Nati, you pointed out quite rightly that it doesn't just fall on the team leader. It is a collective thing here. Now, you were critical of Exist yesterday, saying that this picking into your opponents yep. is almost like a sign of arrogance. It's foolish. It gives you a, an uphill battle. Have TSM done that here, or have they got something up their sleeve? The thing is, since here's the weird thing. They haven't really played Mirage like a million times. It's not like I can conclusively say they're not good on it. Like, they can be good on it, but just from the other side of the coin, basically, that's just, a, it's, it's not that I think, like, exists an idiot. We just have a difference in philosophy. Like, I, I always think to myself, you always try and take away the opponent's strengths. You don't do it like, oh, I'm just trying to get my strengths only. Like, if you're playing a team that you know is better, and you have to kind of admit if you're playing someone like Fnatic, they're probably better than you. You, you just want to limit their strengths more, make it kind of more of an even, even fight, or at least give yourself a chance. So sometimes, in, in my philosophy, that's going to mean ending up on a map that maybe isn't your best map, but there's a bit more play to it, you know. I don't want to go onto a map where I'm not sure I'm that great in it, but I know Fnatic's great on Mirage. They're, they might be the best Mirage team ever. Yeah, and the one thing is that the teams practice consistently. They, they try and find new ways to play these maps, so... Like you said, there could be something that we haven't seen from them before. That's usually what it is, because that's the thing. When Nip does it, that's usually why. they always, It's because there is a degree of arrogance. I'd just call it overconfidence. What happens is sometimes they think to themselves, okay, even though, yeah, like they wouldn't deny, like, yeah, I did lose on that time, and that team is better in this sense, but, you know, you haven't seen what I can do. Like, if, I, if things had gone the right way, then we would have won it this way. So it's just a difference of philosophy. Whereas I, I, I always say I like to go with the things I know, the things that are facts and like, repeatable, that I know it happened last time, it'll happen again. Yeah, but the thing with teams is that sometimes teams have these ups and downs with maps. Like, you know, there's a, like a period when you're like really good on a certain map. There's a period when you're really down on a map. Maybe it's a, it's a thing of them just being confident about their mirage, basically. There, it is worth saying, though, at least they have the luxury of being a map up, getting these vetoes. So in theory, they have a bit more wiggle room. They have more margin for error here. Yeah. Whereas Fnatic, you, they don't have a whole lot because... That's, what, that's one of the things that will make it tough for Fnatic here, even though they are the championship team. I still think they're the favorite. I think they're going to win. Is the fact that they can only drop one out of a possible four maps. Mm. They might have to win three maps in a row if they lose the first map. So this is still going to be tough for them. It's going to be real. They're going to have to not only show us that they're very there's, good, but the one of the best ever to win this final. There's obviously a lot of pressure, and I just want to talk about TSM picking Dust too. Now, Fnatic are a very good CT side. We know that. But it's almost going to be a little bit of a replay of what we saw with Envious, I think, which is that it's about entry pickers on TSM going up against this sort of CT juggernaut, this impenetrable defense, uh, which uh, I think is going to be an important factor. Um, yeah, all well, the thing is, they, TSM have always been a good Dust2 team. It's one of their stronger maps, but this is another map where they, they have fallen apart in the past, but at this tournament, they've been an unreal on that map. Like, actually, their terrorist side is what's been so impressive this time. We always talk in the past about the great CT side, but their terrorist side has been what's doing it for Dust2, I think. Okay, well, uh, as you can see, we've uh, got the knife round underway at the moment for the final, so uh, we'll definitely come back and do some more analysis. Uh, perhaps even talk about some players a little later, but the final must go on. We're going to throw over to our casters to take it away, say to Kirsten Toby one. Thank you very much. Yes, we'll be your casters, W1 and Sadakurst for Fnatic versus TSM. Map number one here as we start on Mirage. And it looks to be, at this point, unless Crims can pull off. Yep, there it is. So it will be Fnatic <laughs> taking the early swings. <laughs> and Toby, I'm, I, this, is, this is crazy. I, we got all the way, the culmination of two months' time. TSM has been the class of the field. They don't win this knife round. They got the map in hand, though. Let's keep that in mind. And this series is going to be so closely contested all the way through. The way TSM's been playing, if they can continue with that form, I mean, there's a case for them moving up in the top 10 rankings easily. Yeah, man. I, I'm interested to see, though, if see if uh, what Thorin says is going to happen actually happens, where Fnatic are able to come back and take out the entire series when they're also one round in front. But it's time to get started. TSM versus Fnatic. Round at number one for map number one. We're going to do a quick little gauge check of the crowd right here. Want to see how many people are live and how much noise can be made. So for the crowd out there, how many Fnatic fans are in the crowd? There's a couple out there, and I'm leaving it for a second because I think there's more fans for this one. How many here for TSM? Well, the Cinderella story for them. Let's see if they can please the fans. They've already won them over, but... Job just getting started. Pistol's already underway, and we see Fnatic already stacked up on the horseshoe. Flusha, the only one that's 
off on a different angle, and again, they go for this close push with Olaf. Kerrigan's gonna be the first one to get shot at. He falls immediately into jungle, so staying passive, but Cajun B needs to get a little bit quicker to get this read. Yeah, I'm loving how TSM are keeping that window open. Olaf's got these initial entry frags so many times from there. They're not gonna give it this time around. Cajun B trying to pre-fire on that, on that uh, catwalk entrance, and also wants to back up to the site, so they slowly make Fnatic push in. But slowly is the key word there. Making sure they've got to work very, very hard for it. And they got to be careful as well with JW already up inside the ladder room. Okay. They're changing it up just a little bit now. So Kerrigan will get hold in, held in place by that. That smoke does mean that he has to guess someone is there. But watch out because here comes your take. Yeah, Dupree at the front lines. That's what it's all about. Get as much information as possible. Starts the battle. Crims. Fnatic will be the one to spill the first blood here. Is there's a quick return from Device. But he's going to flag the fact the A, pl a plant is coming. But Kerrigan still doing work. Finally brought down inside the jungle. JW, he's waiting to be this little lurker coming in from behind. Can't do enough damage. TSM. It's all up to Flusher on Fnatic. He's managed to bring down Device holding on the CT stairs. So it's up to KGB and Zipnix to get the retake. Flusher wants the earlier kill. He still hasn't got this plant down yet. Push Maybe him. he can do a dump, but they, they're running in on him. KGB, Flusher takes one, needs a second, looking for the head. Whoa! He takes it! Flusher with a three for. Then Fnatic take the first round here on the T's. What a turnaround at the end by Flusher. Huge reactions inside jungle to catch out JW behind them initially, and then flush it to close it out. I said push them. I thought they were going to try and prevent the bomb plant to begin with because yep. it looked like the round was already going their way. 19 HP, and he hits those shots. They actually were trying to prevent money coming out, not losing the round. So big, big play. Oh, but the scout already. Kerrigan in window. There's your headshot. Crims is down early. Three scouts, by the way. Three from yep. TSM right now. Not just one, three. Is TSM trying to slow up this... Uh this quick movement by Fnatic, but again, Fnatic, they're basically being given the mid. Yes, you got the scout pick off over on Crims, but the second JW's able to get up there, they get the smoke onto the window. They're able to blind up TSM to a point, but that's why Cajun B forced to come out a little bit more aggressively, that bouncing JW. Looking into short, Device caught him out now. Two scout headshots, this spy's paying off so far. Flusha, Pronax, Olaf now have to regroup and organize themselves and decide where they want to go on this take. They don't have any smoke grenades. Okay, wow. one on Flusha, my mistake, but there's another one. Flusha on the way in. Device does get caught, but watch out underneath Dupree. That nade does a massive amount of damage before Olaf got there, but Kerrigan's not done. Second one for him with the scout tag on a third. Flusha's low, they do get the kill, but they're still pushing forward. Smoke to cover the bomb plant, and KGB's got to hurry up and get over to support Zipnix. Man, that tag almost helps Zipnix to finish off Flusha. He's down 13 HP. Starts with his own little bit of a flash. Pronax knows 100% where Zipnix is. That's why Cajun B is going to play the distraction game. Banging through the box, but Pronax takes care of Zipnix. And it's up to Cajun B. Flush again, low HP. He's got company this time with Pronax, and he's got the Galil. SMG comes out on top. Cajun B picked that up on the rotation, and it's one on one. Jumps over top. Flush not hit from the first bullet. Advantage goes the way of movement. Mechanics wow. with Cajun B, and he time. takes full advantage, but no kit. And There's I'm not no sure he's fully got this. No, this not at all. Not even close. So, Fnatic get away with the round. Great economic damage dealt to Fnatic, but they still pick up the round. That's crucial because, again, the three scout buy also means that the CTs are very limited. And again, they need to pause right now. Looks like uh, Crims is asking for one. The Fnatic, so far, is, it hasn't been these easy contests, but at the same time, they're getting in on the site. They're securing it. Yes, we find ourselves in these end trade-offs into two-on-two -two situation styles, but them, Fnatic, they still have two rounds up against TSM on the D, and this is what they needed to get. This, they, they know they're already battling up against Till. You're one map behind just because of the lower bracket disadvantage. This is the start you're searching for. Obviously, this is only just the very beginning of it. So apparently some sound issues in the house that we have to deal with, but we'll get those out of the way. What a start, though. What a pace. Both rounds come down to one-on-ones. Flusha won the first one. Lost the battle in the second one, but the time was there in their favor. And if that sets the tempo to how a best of five is going to go, this series is looking awesome. And they will force out, actually, on the CT side again. They're going to go for another scout on Kerrigan. And with this SMG on device, if he can start building up some economy just with kills, it'll work in their favor. Pronax has the MP7 out on the opposing side. It's amazing how much space Kerrigan's got to work with over in jungle, because he's, he's managed to find a lot of Fnatic when they enter the A site. And I was about to ask what Crims was going to do, because he was in a position to grab that AK. He does. That means JW goes for another SMG with smoke. So they do have a little bit more to execute now, because they've got three up. Pronax and Flusha have the others. 
on pause. So let's get back into it. Round number three. Fnatic for the first time. They're going to commit a little bit more heavily towards uh, mid and B side by the looks of it. And this is the same time as TSM try and play a lot closer on the defense with Device underneath there on Shadow. Kerrigan tosses the nade, falls. Zipnik still scouting out. He didn't see anybody with that last jump. He's going to smoke it up anyway. Which means Fnatic, well, they are going to push up and they manage to bring down Zipnix, which means the B site not fully open. They've still got Cajun B waiting there. But Fnatic, they want a little bit more information before this. But while they, while they wait, supports arrive. So Kerrigan's moved over with that scout. Looking up, but the flashes do start. Cajun B bringing down Pronax. That's number one. 11 bullets still left in the magazine. And the other issue is now they're traded down to four on four and there's no nades left for Fnatic. They've got no entry. There's your jump scout tagging him up. Olaf's dropped to 13. That's a powerful spot to use that weapon. It's actually, you're all, nine times out of 10, you're already jumping it. So now you can fire away. I mean, it just adds to the potency of it. But again, no nades left right now. So Fnatic have to fight their way into these sites. And Cajun B still has this M4 up. Such a massive problem for Fnatic when the brakes get basically put on by TSM like this. Where does Fnatic go? They've only got 30 seconds left on the clock. Either they're making a full move over to A or they're hoping that TSM go over to A so they can move to the B side. But Carrigan's still with that AWP there. He's going to see him coming. Now 20 seconds on the clock. Fnatic, they have to make a play. Carrigan's still jumping it up. And now he gets the vision, takes out Olaf, the man he tagged up before, looks for the second, but JW gets the entry frag, back over on the bench, it's going to be Crimson to bring down Cajun B, and that the plan will drop, and there's the extra time. That's your rifle as well, he was in good position to use it, but Cajun B loses the battle to the AK, Flush is now going to find Device, and Dupree's all that's left with this 5-7. He can't do anything, he really can't. He's up against three AKs with just a 5-7 and armor. So Fnatic should be able to take up this third round now against TSM. One HP right now for Flush Up. He needs to hurry up and get away. Dupree does find JW. If they don't get further down these hallways, Flush Up could potentially drop the AK as well. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna run. He'll be should be just far enough at this point. Yeah, he is. Dupree took a long time to get away from that too. Uh, he only had 13 HP. He's got the space for it, so uh, everyone will survive, and Dupree saves the AK. Just as big for TSM as no one's got over 2.9k. Well, this is bank. the thing, that early investment. We saw how close that second round was on that defuse. They actually killed all five, couldn't get it. But with the three scouts coming out, now they have to save one more. So they're giving another round to Fnatic here. Again, though, if that goes back the other way, five seconds the difference on the defuse. TSM turned around. They're in this and potentially up 3-1 rate. Right, we're going toward 3-1 rate right now. So it's been back and forth. Dupree does find the first shot. That's Pronax to go down. Olaf responding, though, and Flush is actually going to contribute to the advantage. Now takes down Kerrigan and make oh. it more. Cajun B gets caught as well. And Olaf wrote that perfectly. He realized they're going to come back over to try and pick up that AK. So we tossed the nade in, and they just kept the spray coming towards the window. It was Device, who's the man holding from there, and he actually is able to outshoot Olaf. But this reveals out the positions of both Zipnix as well as Olaf, and they get mopped up by JW and Flusher in turn. And lots of money now. In fact, straight to the AWP on Kerrigan. And uh, with the money bonus at four rounds, they'll be able to grab a hefty amount of grenades as well. The question here, though, is Zipnix. Okay, he's late buying out the nades, so he does go for head armor. I thought he might just go for the chest and try and sustain a little more for the next round, but he's going to go for two flashes. They've got three smokes to delay. Fnatic looks like they're going to commit a little bit more into that mid. They've, they've gone for underpass multiple times. The TSM, this time they're looking for it. It's Dupree, who's the man with the angle, but heavy smokes across the mid. Zipnik's going to bring down JW to start off the round. Took a large amount of damage for it, but it's able to be successful. As Flusher. He's not going to walk into the crosshair, is he? No, they're actually chasing each other out from there, and Flush is going to kill off Carrigan. It's going to open up Palace and also expose the A-side a little bit more. While Crimson Pronax trying to get some level of advantage over towards Cat. Bomb still dropped safely inside Horseshoe as well, so they will have to circle back on that once they find more information or perhaps another pick. And changing the angle again on the defense. That smoke top connector does just mean Dupree has to play it. And look at Olaf, he's already up. He's already gone to ladder, jumped up into the vent. Cajun B gets caught. And they don't have a response because they've rotated that player off a catwalk. Man, looking at Olaf, he's brought the same amount of form. And here it is again, bringing down Dupree. He was doing this yesterday with the AK, using it almost like it's a scope. Now he wins so many of these long range battles. He's guessing there's a player down a bench. The funny thing is, he's actually guessing right, just not far enough to the left. Whereas Zipnix, now Olaf able to do it. 
He's already managed to find three for the round, leaving Device with that AWP, the last man standing. Flushes on the chase. And Device is on the run. They're all fanning out. Got to keep that AWP as far away from Fnatic as possible. That's the only gun they're going to have to work with as well. Even with the money bonus, they'll be able to force out into FAMAS if they want. Yeah, but that AWP can change so much. If, if you're able to get into that mid, get a couple of picks, you're looking great. But uh, it looks like that will be the contest for it. Yeah. In fact, uh, just a bit of a quick peek. It reveals the position. Olaf's going to flash it out and device blind as anything. He does get out and killing off Olaf, but there's a secondary flash now coming in. Flusher in close and he will bring him down. Worth the battle for it. They will lose an AK for it, but they pick up the AWP pick instead. Pick up the AWP, exactly. And on that, they won't bother going for the full force because they can't get out around the AWP. If they have that up, then there's a chance that they can justify buying rifles to support it. They won't. They're going to go straight to a deagle. A couple of five, or pardon me, P250s out and... That's about it, and you're dead right. You just highlighted it and pointed yep. it to me. Flushes Flusher. on 10 and 1 right now. And yesterday, JW, in fact, JW leads the tournament right now with ratings and statistics on entries. The first game they played against TSM, JW was the only one that really did perform. So the fact that Flush is coming on early is definitely going to help them overcome the problems <gasps> they had on day one. JW, the timing couldn't have been any worse for him, and now they're going to try and rush him. He does get the kill on Zipnix, but the nade from KGB will bring him down. Flush is still there to support it. Throws down the Molotov while Pronex causing issues. They're already on the B site while Flush is playing this mid-battle against TSM. They just want to get up and find some kind of rifle or weapon, but they can't do it. Flush is just racking up more kills for the count. So Dupree finds himself lonely and left alone to go down to Flush up. Flush is now 13-1-1. Another three in that round. I mean, the economy builds for him as well. 76-50. He's actually going to throw his gun away and buy out for a teammate as a result. Full needs come out. Got 5-7 as a secondary pistol. Pick that up off a CT player as well. So double up set up now. Device Kerrigan going to pick that up. What's the spawn position going to be though? So Kerrigan's the first one to get out of spawn. Device goes to his default, default excuse me, over toward A. And they fan out accordingly. But watch out for Fnatic. They're already setting up. Yep. And when these flashes and smokes will arrive, then, uh, well, here's already your first flash as the smokes are flying in. Debris in the corner next to Firebox, takes down one, and he's actually managed to stall off the push. There's still a trade off as a two for two, but Carrigan got this all back inside the jungle. The smokes are very heavy. Flash is going towards the CT stairs, and Carrigan trying to find himself a more forward position as Cajun B's moved up to the That's CT big. stairs. That drops the bomb again as well, so now they have a chance to hold them off. They can't even get in position oh. for the plant. That's, he was waiting for the team flash. It comes too late. Zipnix was up too close, and that catches out Pronax. So Cajun B closes it out. Now we're on the board with TSM. Finally, they can't let this get too far ahead. And crucially, this resets a money bonus CT side. So if they don't... I mean, even winning that round, they did do it... In, a fairly efficient fashion, but if they don't win this one in a convincing fashion, they're still going to be tight in the next buy after this. Yeah, man, this is, this is, this is getting rough now. 6-1 TSM, is this the start? Is this, this the start of momentum? Carrigan looking to try and gain more of it. Picking up for that mid, but it's the quick pusher that came up from below. Going to force him back. And out of that mid connector. Always got to keep your eye out. It's actually Crims, the man. Trying to find that earlier push. Takes a lot of damage down to 10 as TSM. They do not want to let Underpass go freely. Zipnix is the man that gets to defend over an apartment. Olof. Last time we saw him here, he was able to find two pickups. And Fnatic's really trying to limit TSM ab uh, TSM's ability early in the round to do damage. A lot of late smokes out on window. That forces them off of it. They don't have a second player inside connector because of the way Olaf's been coming up from the underpass. In that round, it was actually Crims. But this means they actually have to play by reading Fnatic late and trying to stack up the correct bomb site because they're not getting the picks. And that means when you you got to hold on to as many of these nades as possible. How many have we got? We got a, a crab ton of flashes, only one smoke and grenade left. But they're taking already considerable damage to the Molotov. Couldn't have come at a worse time. So you're 30 seconds left on the clock. And the rest of the team of Fnatic, all you can do is hold. The TSM are well prepared for the Zipniks. Copping a nade to the face, they kind of know he's in the corner, and they will bring him down, but Cajun B from the, from the bench, finding two, there's more coming in. So he has to reposition himself up as Olaf, looking for the best crossfire he can find, takes out Cajun B, shoots in, takes out Kerrigan too. The last two left cooking in the kitchen, a JW takes out one of them, it's all down to Dupree to stop Fnatic from taking their seventh round. And he manages to tag up JW. 
fully revealing his position. All Fnatic, well, they would love to get rid of that AWP in Dupree's hands. Team Flash to come out. Yep, they get now. Dupree's on the run, and he's so far away, the Fnatic cannot chase him in time. And TSM needs... To, they, they look a little bit nervous. I mean, Zipnix gets a little antsy in the corner. They've already covered him off. K I will say KJV stayed well composed to hit those two shots. We talked yesterday about on land. He's been quite patient. They're actually going to chase all the way. Dupree does get Olaf, so at least one down. But he's still got company. Does Crims get in position? No, Dupree gets him as well, so... A bit wow. of a consolation prize, but again, money bonus reset. Like we said, Cajun B is the only one who can actually get anything out right now. But they need to settle down. This is where Fnatic has all the experience. TSM, this is their first major final. They're known to crack under pressure. Get it out of the system early. Try and compose themselves. Cajun B, I will say, started off well in that round, but the rest of them need to do the same device. Also needs to get back into this quickly. And running up so close here. Crim's already managed to bring down Carrigan. There's still two more defenders looking to hold this A side as the flashes, the nades, they all come out. And the rotation player from TSM, they're expecting more, more presence over here on the A side. But funnily enough, Fnatic are going to start playing mind games. They want to find more picks by the looks of it. JW is just hoping. Uh, device, he's got no intention of coming up. And the setup, they've already rotated off of their default. So this could favor Fnatic. One delay smoke out on the A ramp, but here they go. Flash already over. Dupree has gone forward of it, though, but he's got to be so careful. And there's one. Can he get more? He does. That's a gift. Thank you very much, Crims. I'll take your AK and the bomb. But Pronax does come back in and answer him out eventually. Yep, and they've got to try and hold this even further. Device, he can't see the head, but he can find that one. Pronax going to go down. Realize there's still another one on the side. JW tries up in front of him, point blank range with the orb. Zipnix on the bounce. Will drop, and it's all up to Olaf. He's been big for them in the round so far. And slow it down. Again, we started with two very close rounds. It was a similar situation to this, a two-on-one late in the round. Though. You want to try and slow it down with 23 seconds? It's He has to get over and get this plant. The covering of the smoke, he knows there's one at the back. Well, I was more, I, I was more speaking from TSM. They oh, yeah. needed to slow it down and secure, because if they overcommit on the push, they limit themselves to one-on-ones. There we go. That's a well-executed round, and Device was perfect on the stairs. There's too many corners for Olaf to check. And now with a double orped up from TSM. Save from that last round. Fnatic are the ones that are going to keep, be keeping their heads in. Of course, it's not the first time that TSM have had those double orbs, and they didn't find the initial frags last time either. I mean, this 7-2, yeah, the last couple rounds prior to that were a little more favorable to Fnatic, but TSM's definitely in this. Theoretical to speak, oh, nice play by Kerrigan. Reads Crims perfectly from the underpass, but theoretical to say this, but remember, if that three-scout buy had worked out, it could actually still be TSM here with the favorable position on the scoreboard. Device gonna fall off on the angle, has to cover from top, and Fnatic are slowing it down because they lose the early man and they don't have anyone else in position to counter peek it. Yeah, so all they do is just wait for uh, TSM to try and find the extra advantage, but TSM just gotta play a patient too. As you said, slow it down is the best thing you can do when you're, when you're one man up. Pronax is the man has to have a bit of a peek, able to see Device, revealing the positions, or at least revealing his position, flashes up towards the window. Like, You've already got Carrigan moving into a better position. Able to see around just the edge of the smoke. Oh my goodness, just goes by. That still delays it, down to 37 seconds. Still a lot to work with in the fact that they're spread out in the mid. But this is a full change in the rotation as well from the way TSM decided to go about things. They brought Device up close and pulled Kerrigan all the way off of middle, back over to where Device has normally been playing. So it's a different angle, and Device up close was effective last time. We'll see if he can do it again. Flush wow. is already going to find Kerrigan, and it's all going to be Device when they come in. But, but Dupree, Dupree is going to find them on the backside. They thought they had free access, and now Device gets Flusha. Yeah, and that bomb is dropped. There's no way to get it back into his hand. So Pronax, all he can do is take some weapons off. He can't even do that. So TSM hold the round. They pick up the secondary AWP as well, so KGB was able to recover that. And that's a very good read from Dupree to get up close because it's late in the round. There's no call over at B that there's any indication they're going to be there. So he starts getting up close, knows they have to be there eventually. He, even if he doesn't get the kill, they can call for a slightly quicker rotation and counterplay on the entry. Instead, he gets them both, drops the bomb. There's nothing Flusha can do to recover it. I'm wondering if he also felt like, if Fnatic felt a little bit pressured on time then, because that's the second time in this map that he has done that same position. So Fnatic not checking these corners. 
And now they don't want to be waiting this game out. How, how long can they keep doing this? You keep having one minute burnt off at the start of every single round, then forced into this well, unfavorable push. I mean, that's the thing. If they can't find the early picks, at least don't give them up. If they play passively, it does make the job a lot harder for Fnatic to find the openings. And that's the rounds that they got was actually when they got the man advantage quite early on. As Kerrigan does take a bit of damage crossing back over window, that means JW's going to have to fall off because his spot's been given up and KGB was already pushing out above him. Yeah, JW also dropping down to 21, so he's not a healthy man either. And, uh, where does the rest of Fnatic really want to move? KGB just floating in between that mid as well as B site. He knows the underpass is being pressured, but at the same time, he knows they could just easily move up to apartments. And wants to help out Zipnix if that's going to be the case. But Fnatic, well, there's JW now finally going to go down. KGB finds that one. Device prepares himself for that push in through mid-connector. Takes only one, however, and that means the AWP is into the hands of Crims. And how long can he hold it? As the TSM. Yep, that's how long he can hold it. No time at all. Pronex will at least get the plant down so they get some extra money from this, but it'll be a very quick shot. Mopping up, and TSM, fourth round here on the CTs. And these double ops are definitely coming alive now. Two for Cajun B that time, two for Kerrigan. Device will probably be the man to go for at T side, but right now they're going back to this default. We saw what KGB can do defensively with the op on Dust all weekend long. He's yep. been amazing at holding off the cat pushes. Now he's starting to come alive as well in the back side of A. So Fnatic have to find an early opening again. Back to five AKs. Actually fun watching KGB on that M4 because it was, it was Device who started with it in the last round. And uh, TSM, here's Carrigan again looking for that pick. Letting him play a little bit more aggressive, pushing Dupree out through the window. And Dupree was actually in a good position because that close smoke on Cat would have allowed Olaf to slide to the boxes, but Dupree was up close enough that he would have spotted him doing it. That sense changed, but Fnatic, again, not able to find any opening. They just can't see TSM. The TSM aren't giving him the options for it. We're not seeing the, the direct AWP battles down mid. The, the pick's coming in through the B side. You're having to commit so much to even kill off the truck player. And then in through A, TSM have been mixing up their defense points. Like, it's either been front it's, or mid or back. Well, it's it's difficult it's, to read. It's not only that. The players' positions in terms of which site they're at changes a lot. They're very dynamic. Probably one of the only teams that are more than willing, based on the situation, what guns they've got out, what spawns they have. They can all play every position, and it, it definitely, when it starts to work and click, it, it's very tough to play against. Because right now, again, Kerrigan, this is not where we've seen him. He's all the way at the back side. Zipmix is the one up close, and... That's definitely a change of pace for how Fnatic have seen things on this B site. We're counting down the time again. 32 seconds on the clock, and Carrigan's brought down JW. So Apartments is already hard to push in. That flash has assault any maybe floating pusher that was behind him. And that's why they change it, because with the off, again, what guns they have. He gets the long shot. Now Zipnix can return Ooh. from Cat. Carrigan missing two of these. That's allowed Fnatic to jump down top of the side. He knows there's another one. Now he does hit onto Crims. Looking for that hit. Finally, he can take down Pronax and Carrigan. Going big with this AWP. Flusher reveals position, but Carrigan. Forfa takes the quad. And TSM dragging back round after round after Fnatic. Now bringing it only two rounds the difference. Excellent dynamic play. Again, Car I, you can't praise that enough. That's just knowing your teammates and putting trust in it. Zipnix gets up into the catwalk with the rifle. Carrigan just goes to work. and. Again, we hadn't seen him there prior. Now it's actually going to be a change again. It's KGB that heads over that way because Kerrigan has the mid spawn. So the early round is what dictates how they play this. Flush is trying to play the decoy game at the moment. Just pop that flash up with Zipnix. Just doing the jump scout and with the Molotov, there's there's no way for Fnatic to quickly push in, and they want it. Like, you look, you're looking at the Rec 9s as well as the CZ, and here they come. Another little flash out, but Zipnix waiting for it, killing off Pronax from below. One, two, looking for the third, can't finish it. Olaf will drop down, but the support's there from Cajun B. Sitting on that A short from Cat, he's waiting for more players, getting tinked up. Down to 18, needs more support. Olaf still on top of that side. They've got that M4 in hand, but Device removing it from him. And Flush of the last man left standing on the site. Bringing Device down to 24. Well, it's a one-on-three situation, and Cajun B, Flusher knows he's locked into that corner. There's nowhere else to go because the AWP is watching for him. They're all coming down, and TSM will successfully retake. Good bomb, bomb plant from Fnatic, considering it was dropped at Van on the way in. And what allowed that was actually Cajun B was slightly too far overexposed to the right. That allowed Olaf to get the damage into him, forced him back, and then they could pick up the bomb. If he had just held slightly a tighter angle, and I think he thought he was because he was scoped in. I don't think he realized how far out that he was. 
then they wouldn't have even got a cross. So that's a bit of a victory in that sense. They'll get money for that. And now JW is going to go straight to his op. We'll see if he can finally get something going toward middle. And yeah, currently he's got nothing going. He's 4-1-11 on, on, the, on the KDA. It's, it's really, really low. And another massive change. The op actually goes to Device because he has the better spawn for it. So Cajun's back onto a rifle, and he's in an entirely different position again than we've seen him. Yep. Switch and mix. Ronax that Molotov into mid. It just slows him down. That's the CT's one. Making sure there's no push up through underpass. TW giving away his position with that AWP. Banging out from apartments, just hoping for some forward position to be exploited. But the rest of uh, Fnatic, yeah, they're coming in with fresh, but Zipnix can't hold the line. He's got Karakim there. Able to claim the second of the third man that was pushing in, and actually takes Olaf. Point blank, looks for JW, takes another set. Karakim going a huge in the last couple of rounds. He's probably going to be hearing Pronax in a moment, at least going to see him with the bullets. And finally, they can slow him down, but oh, these extra made. players, good name position, takes out the vice, and they didn't do enough work on Dupree, and Pronax can't hold it. They've got to recover both these orbs. They've held onto them, and there they are. This yep. is like the sixth round in a row that TSM have held onto these double orbs, and it's the last round of the first half. Talk about lead by example, though. Kerrigan, not only your strat caller, he's doing all the work right now. Him on B with this op is absolutely relentless. And Zipnix had actually gone down. The, the frag distribution's quite close. Kerrigan's on 15, it's 14 for KGB, 11 and 10. Zipnix is down on six. Again, he's the support player in that position. When he goes down, that makes Kerrigan's job even harder, and he's still pulled off those shots. This time, already silenced. Olaf's going to find him. Yeah, this is the first time in a very long time Fnatic got an advantage, but it instantly gets turned around by Device. Sending up on the ticket booth, taking Olaf through the mid-connector, and Dupree waiting for one, taking out two, third in the smoke, but he can't find Flush. The Flush is just shooting back out of it. But this is Device with the auto-sniper. That's the reason why they don't want to push in. They've only got two players left to smoke to there, but they have no choice. Flusher. He's onto the side, the flashes are down, but the plan also with it. So Fnatic, can they hold? Can they get that one run advantage coming into the second half? They won't be able to fall back into that A ramp though, because they've already got the crossfire set. So Device does find the first. Zipnix actually gets Flusha, as Cajun B was the first over. Easy retake. Make no mistake about it, they've got the kit in lots of time regardless this time. So we'll bring it back. In fact, we started off six rounds to the good at 7-1 at one point for Fnatic, and then TSM with dynamic, great teamwork. Teamwork has been their strength this yeah. entire tournament, their dust two play was all team oriented. And again, it pulls them back. They end up one round ahead at the halftime. I wouldn't have expected that at the way this, this, this started. No, you really would. A Fnatic were looking like they were rolling with all sorts of momentum. But then TSM, they just found their mojo. They were able to move so nicely. I'm wondering if they can achieve the same thing on teeth. Like the rotation game, the mixing up of defense positions is great. But now they're playing a different game. They're playing the entry frag game up against Fnatic. And again, it's a case of what might have been in the, in the situation where that three scout round came down to a one-on-one -on -one actually got the kill, but no kit. We could be in a much more advantage or advantageous position for TSM. Now, remember, we are going against Fnatic. It is Mirage. JW is extremely dynamic toward window. And Crim's in the connector to support that. I mean, if they start rotating, it's not quite as dynamic over the whole map from like what we just saw from TSM, but... It is very difficult. Their, their early mid presence, that three peak setup that they have, can be uh, co very hard to contend against. Well, let's watch TSM. Let's see how they go. Pistol rounds now underway, and JW's going to get the vision. He saw four at least running down this mid into the connector. How aggressive are they being? Jumping through into the window. Crims holding up at least. No, he cannot actually shot, stop, stop the priest movement. But Cajun B, they throw out the nades to try and block him up in this window as Fnatic. How aggressive does CSM want to do? They basically cut this map in half. And Device is going to do it himself. He's got the bomb, but he gets the kill. That's important. So flush it down. This will force a rotation, but it's still three on three. They haven't opened it up entirely, so they'll sit back. They've still got a minute to contend with. Yep. Just slow it down. Let, let Fnatic worry about which bomb site they're going to. That's the reason why Fnatic are pushing up so far into this catwalk, because they're worried they need to get over to A quickly, but Device waiting for him. Gets the tags out, but it goes two ways that way. Device. And then the nade in around the corner. Hits Device. He's back up the ladder, however. Alive on 42. And he needs to get through that vent. He does. This will let him get out of there because otherwise he's pinched. Yep. They're going for that boost over top. That spots Dupree. Meanwhile, Device is already oh, on the backside. Wow. And look at that nade. And Device wow. gets it. Not only do they just hold them off, all I was going to say was hold off the catwalk. If you can't get the kills, let Device find the entry. They do more than that. Everybody down. So a pistol round apiece. And they're going to go straight to two AKs and one MP7 already out for Zipnix. Kerrigan's going to do the same. Uh, TSM, they got what they needed. 
Fnatic, they're going to be a little bit more reserved than TSM was in the second half, second round of the CT half. They've only got one of these scouts in for Crims. And they're hoping they push into the A site. That B player is going to be Pronax and might have a lot more pressure applied to him. Flasher also trying to get some information down the mid. Kerrigan already sliding across. Now keep in mind, he's got the SMG, so he doesn't have... Got the, the damage potential, he just wants information, exactly. They're coming, and now Wild Dupree just instantly drops him. He was the one man that wasn't flashed. And they've already got the site, Fnatic. They don't even want a bar of this. They don't want to give him SMG kills. Yeah, no, I'm, and it's not even the SMG kills that they're giving away with the frag distribution. It's also that they've got armor they want to save in their scout for Crims. So another one of those rare situations that you only sort of see in the high-level competitive when they start thinking mathematically where we might potentially see nine people alive and yet the round expire with a bomb detonation. And yeah, they know they just play for the next one. So Fnatic and obviously TSM were, were in a pretty good state to get back-to-back -back rounds anyway, but that movement, I, I, I want to go back to round number one here of their T side. How quickly did they come up and the aggressive jump into middle. So far of this whole LAN tournament, it's always been this late delayed play. Even now, first half of this, like, the amount of breaches into into the bomb sites within the first 30 seconds, maybe one, two rounds, that was all. But TSM was like, you know what? We're just going to run it. I mean, that's, again, a pistol thing. You can get that train rolling for you. Yep. Not only that, yeah, it's pistol. It's probably not going to play too much in the minds of Fnatic, but that's one way to say, hey, we know we can take mid as well. So it, it does start to get a little bit psychological at that point. But again, Fnatic's been in this position a thousand times. It's TSM that are the ones under pressure. Right now they're living up to it. Three round lead, but the three AKs are going to have to go against this scout from Crims. Olaf, he's realizing he has to back up. Throws out the grenade. It's going to hit nicely in the Cajun B, but they've still got the armor in the AKs. Olaf cannot win this from Shadow. There's a little bit of help to be there, so while uh, Karagun will be dropping at the same time. Now TSM, they're currently holding back. Zipnix is the man taking care of the plant. After he already managed to get himself another frag. And all of Fnatic then locked into this mid-connector as well as Jungle Angle. Secondary flash, that holds them off. And Crimson just can't see anything with this, with this scout. Like, even for a small advantage, it's KGB, Zipnix, and, and, uh, and uh, Dupree. They're all killable with the scout. This device is the man who's the healthiest of them all. And there's KGB already on the Crimson. Gets himself a second on the Pronax. And Flusher. The bomb is still ticking out, and uh, Zipnix won't be able to get out of this one safely. But TSM still hold on to the three AKs at the end of the round. Yeah, that's the important part, because Dupree was low, so he had to take off early. The important part on the entry, actually, was there was a smoke out. Dupree was lurking from Palace on that close-up player, but he couldn't peek because that scout's already staring at him. Not only that, the smoke goes out low. He plays far enough back on jungle. He still has that angle on Dupree's entry, so they have to get up over top of Tetris and control him, just contain him, and they did it perfectly. And then as we saw, they just smoked off the site, walked in, got the plant, so a good read to control the scout. That was the biggest threat on the entry. JW is looking for this, uh, this opening in mid, using the M4 to sp spray through. He was able to tag up Karaka, but they're boosting over the top of the smoke, missing that shot with the scout. Speaking of scout, Mr. Olof, he was the man give, given that scout after they managed to recover it. Even after the bomb plant went down, he went back in for it, but no early frags just to that damage onto Carrigan. And TSM again controlling up mid. The connector is where you're probably going to see that first little battle. Crims is worried about it. With the smoke, there's not a lot of vision to play around with. Device down to four. Carrigan's able to bring down JW though. So the man of vanish now belonging to Fnatic Dupree. Waits perfectly. Crims got a little impatient and want to have a peek. Talk about mid control. Not even able to get out there for Fnatic, so they'll play it passively. Flusha just wants to make sure no one's gonna push through the front side of the window, but that's not where they're going at all. Pronax spots up exactly where they are. Cajun B drops, Device back into him with the op through the wall, and now they'll head in toward B. Flusha's rotated back quickly, though he's already there to catch Device. That's your M4, but good trade. That has to be traded immediately, because that prohibits Olaf from coming in with friends. Surprisingly, he turned to the side, because Olaf was covering his back there. And they had no damage onto the T's. But where do you want to come out? You can come out through the window. You've still got two flashes available here for Olaf, so we can play around with this. Just pops the first one so we can check to the right. Shoots Carrigan in the back. He wasn't looking there. Their angles weren't perfect, Whoa, but Zipnix okay. is still able to hold Ooh. the bomb site. I was about to be very critical 
of Zipnix. If Kerrigan's going to hold that angle with his back completely exposed, it's Zipnix's job to watch the door. That flash popped out, but it still didn't catch Zipnix. It was that he didn't make the call soon enough. He wasn't in a position to take the shot. So if he then loses the one-on-one, -on -one, both those deaths potentially could have been his fault. So he does pull out the round a little bit closer than they would have liked for comfort, but TSM now sitting on 12. It's Fnatic who have gone extremely quiet. Remember, they had 7-1. They haven't got a round since. Yeah, now they're actually going to have themselves a pause. It looks like, uh, yeah, it's just a timeout from JW. There's no issues. They just need time because they've got issues inside their play as this CT side. Your money's not really great for the next round as well. So uh, Fnatic, they, they, need, they need to slow this game down. That's probably the most important thing for them. TSM are just rolling with so much momentum. And it's happened from the start. Like Fnatic, almost all of their seven rounds they claimed were in the first half. Well, they were all in the first all half. The first yeah, half. They, yeah, they were, they were I mean, there's 11 yeah. rounds unanswered right now from TSM, and we talked about how nerves and jitter look like. Again, you're, you're in those close situations. Maybe it's playing a factor against TSM. I, I, I stand corrected. They've definitely settled into it. Again, it's team play that's doing it for them. And now it's Fnatic. Remember, there's a map in hand right now to TSM, so this could go if they don't pull themselves together right now on the back of this timeout as a team. This could go 2 nothing already for TSM. It could. And again, this is their first major final. They're, I, I think, I've been saying for a while they're due for a win, but they still have to earn it. It's not like it's going to be gifted to them, and right now they're doing the job. And it's, I, you can't even really highlight one player. Yes, Kerrigan's been very strong. Cajun B's actually on 17 uh, along with him. They're all extremely close. Zipnix is playing his support role as expected, but it's team overall, and, and that's... I mean, other teams have to look at this. This is one of the problems North America has. You could argue that they have as much skill as potentially TSM does. Maybe not as much depth in their lineup, but certain players, they never play like this. If, if teams learn to do this, much like Keed Stars from Brazil, it makes a massive difference. I, I just almost want to flag uh, more the fact that JW hasn't got the space to be dynamic. I know he was one of the first things we're talking about for Fnatic CT side, that ability to control window connector and make TSM fear coming down the mid. But Right now, like he's been playing with the M4 more. They're giving the rifles over to Olaf. Uh, but it's still that same positional play where JW's been trying to control that mid. But since the first push, since TSM ran through the mid with pistols, Fnatic, they just don't want to be there anymore. Now, they are here in an eco round or semi. Uh, so they're trying to group themselves up against TSM. And again, the mid... Well, obviously, in this case, due to money, mid's open. So yep. they'll be able to walk it out. Flusher does just want to go for this peak, but... They need to find a read. They need to send someone out to recon this. They know the economy's hurt. They know they're going to be on this force buy or pistol buy of some fashion. So they can't walk into a stack. They can't afford that. That throws things back the other way entirely. And remember, TSM late in games does have problems closing it out. Any advantage they can give themselves the best. And there's KGB. That's going to find flush up. Seems almost cruel for TSM because the panel was saying, and you know, you're saying as well as like TSM, no choke. No choke. Just don't do it. Device getting heavily tagged up there by JW. And it's not even that you choke late when you're on 14, it starts slipping around now. When you're on, I mean, if you're at 12, you start giving up economy. You walk in, like I say, to a stack in this position, you break yourself, then you start fighting for the rounds. Whereas if they play this anti eco to perfection, then Olof. they start building up a bank. It's much easier to find those last couple. Now, Olaf can't see anything there. Initially, he saw the foot of TSM Planter. Now, Dupree's waiting for the rotation out, so he knows that they don't have to worry about jungle. They can keep their eyes over towards the CT stairs and connector. Cajun B taking care of that connector player, which was Pronax. And in fact, Dupree, well, he can try and do this as quick as he can, and maybe he should be a little bit, well, I say quicker device as well as Cajun B is so, uh, so low. But with Dupree on the flank, JW, he's just surrounded on all sides. There was no way he could defend that one. And the three AKs help for TSM, 13-7. The money is their way. They're still 9K on Zipnix, but Fnatic have themselves a buy around. And they're going oh, all out for wow. it. They've actually picked up the auto on, on Olaf. And this is going to be just him hold A. That's the only thing. Yeah, JW right. hopefully get the picks in mid. That's what Fnatic need. And JW had a good spawn to get to mid as well. He'll get there. Smoke already close. Cat, that'll make him think there's someone there. But right now, it's not exactly what TSM have in mind. They've got other plans. Flusha comes out. Now you've got this three set up. This is what Fnatic are famous for. Flusha Cat. Crim's up close. He's actually the one to drop and check the underpass, and JW just holding straight up middle. But the fact they haven't smoked the window should indicate that they're not coming, because you're always going to smoke off JW. So Fnatic's going to change it up on that queue. Olaf is blind. He can't use this auto sniper. And they're, uh, they're coming through the on the A side. The number of smokes. Look at this fake. This is perfect. They pulled everyone from Fnatic. They're going to wow. walk in. Kerrigan's already there. Device is joining the party, and Zipnix has the bomb down. Perfect execution on the fake. Five smokes out, and they bought it. 
And now TS, uh, TSM, all you got to do is hold it, but you've already lost JW, so you lost one of your orbs, and yeah, you're pointing him out. What's that movement of the road T at Carrigan? Into the, into the kitchens, holding him back. TSM also. They've got all they've got all the great positions. They hold on almost everything Here apart comes. from Cat, and that's Here where Fronix is coming. And yep, it's Cajun B. In through the rear, Olaf will shut him down with the auto sniper and Flusher. They've got apartments now. It's only one player left. Fnatic is the best position for Zipnix, taking two. Pronax is spraying through. He's on the side. There's no more time. He can't do anything apart from his use. There is no time. The bomb will explode. You'll end up killing them all. So oh, they're all dead. But TSM, they are two rounds away from taking map. Well, basically, me class is number two because it'll give them a two map advantage against Fnatic. When your support and, and role player steps up in a massive clutch on which he has to hold not only three players, three angles and pulls that off, man, TSM are on a whole other level right now from Fnatic. And they need to wake up. The Swedes are definitely on the back foot. Cajun B came in on that flank. That was the right call because they were already forced off. If he just comes in from the same angle, they're already going to have the retake positions established. So he caught one. That made it a lot easier. Right now, already a trade going out. It's Dupree in with one and out with the other. Yeah, but TSM, they're on the A site. And again, they can't. Fnatic, it's, it's this retake situation, but they're so sporadically placed. Uh, yeah, you can be looking for potentially a flank, but Device and JW, they already find each other, and JW will get that kill. Important for him as well because that means he's got the AWP. This three takes possible as Flusher mopping up Kerrigan. A Cajun B waiting for JW to arrive. Perfect. So Pronax and Flusher, can they stop TSM from having eight map points? Uh, it, 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 They're it, not doing it. No, They're going to they, let it go. They can't. That bomb's planted into fault spot with Zipnik's not only up close to slow them down, even if they get him, Cajun B's in the A ramp. And we made mention yesterday of why that's so good because. Not only is it extremely open angle for him to peek, they've got to go so far away from the bomb if they want to take the fight to him. It's not often, I mean, maybe, sure, the Hiko, are you kidding me round? That's one of the only rounds where someone actually won in that situation. So Fnatic think better of it. They fall out and it's match point already for TSM. Uh, it's so quick. And this so goes quick. to Dust2 next. And they were, uh, they've been, I mean, uh, brilliant Wonderful. is an understatement. Wonderful is an understatement. They've been awesome on Dust2 all weekend. So this is looking good, but again, it is Fnatic, and TSM can't take anything for granted. That's right, but at the same time, TSM, just this one round, they still remain undefeated as far as the maps go in the tournament, not even, not even just the series. There's Olaf, already able to find that pickoff on Dupree, just popping a couple of bullets through the connector, and now again, again able to come up through the, uh, through the underpass. He's got the flank coming in. In fact, he's going to get shut down by KGMB. It was hoping to flash and then take that, that rotating player out. Tight spot for Kerrigan to be in. He will have, have heard one player go past him. So that gives him a bit of a read, but this is a very tough spot, and Zipnix just has to bite himself some time. I'm wondering oh, if... Oh, actually, this works perfectly because Flusha goes too far, and that opens up B. They over-rotate it, and Kerrigan's going to walk in. Now he just needs to get support. Cajun's a little out of position, so, yeah, Flusha gets a free one. Kerrigan was too busy watching, watching for the corners. He was hoping to clean out the B side. He didn't realize like, what we knew, which was Flusha so far up the mid, so the bomb is in the middle of the open, and that means Fnatic can rotate over. Flusher takes second, and they should be able to mop up Zipnix, revealing his position. Yeah, Flusher will take his third for the round, and Fnatic, they're picking up the consolation prize and keeping their hopes alive here in map one. And keep in mind, that's their first round in the last 14 that they've won. That's, I mean, that's ridiculous to say against Fnatic. Well, she noticed the money as well here on TSM. Zipnix is having to buy up for the rest of his teammates. They. If, if they end up losing this round, then Fnatic will have the economy advantage. Oh, I mean, it's been close rounds. Get out of the two-on-two two win two rounds ago. They lost everyone after the round before that. Excuse me, two before that. I mean, they've been keeping them fairly honest in terms of the buys. And there we go. Olaf now has an op out, and Dupree's going to find that out the hard way. Wow, but Carrigan, look at it just roll in. The flashes are there, and JW playing from Shadow is able to stop the push in a very, very quick round. 23 seconds in total for it. And Fnatic back-to-backs and TSM in a position they haven't been so far or in a very, very long time. Welcome to Pistols. TSM need to close this, close this out quickly. Just psychologically, if they start to slip in another situation like this. You said it was meant to happen at 12 rounds, well, not 15. Well, it, 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 I mean, let's face it, they've got a number of match points still to work with, but if that starts to happen, that takes the wind out of their sails into the next map because it just gets inside their head. If they close this out right now, I'm, I'm going to make a bold prediction and say they'll take this in two. 
because they'll just have the confidence for it. Pronax, though, does catch Cajun B again. Like you said, Pistol, so he's just rushing in that time. Yeah, and Flusher playing up on Cap, but he can't win the battle here. There's damage coming into Device. And the AK gets also in that hands of Device. That's only two players left. JW knows where he is, and he wins the battle here. So there's only the pistol that's left. It was the P250, and that's shit out of the hands. So Fnatic, it was still the pistol round. They managed to make Fnatic drop at least two of their weapons, but the orb remains in the hands of Olaf. And TSM back into rifles again. And it's going to be five AKs that they go with. And the double orbs. Zipnix was $50 light of being able to pull out the op. It would have been glass cannon had he done so, though, so why risk it? And there's JW slide. That time we saw him go to the window, drops down, checks underpass, up connector. This allows Crims back closer into the site. That means they've got one more defender as the take comes in. Dupree gets one, but he's immediately dropped. There's Crims. It's exactly the positional play they want out of that. When JW drops, that's how he has to shuffle back in. Bomb still goes down, though. Great smokes to hold him off. Yeah, but they need a way for these smokes to dissipate. Olaf on the flank, able to find a vice, which means now TSM are walking behind themselves. He wanted the AK, but KGB moved up so quickly. Massive play, KGB. Because now not only does he have the A ramp to hold, they take it out, make it back to two on two. Kerrigan has to be the one to delay again. Flush is going to come the long way around. If he can find the angle onto Kerrigan, they might have a chance. Oh, they got and one. they do. And the smoke's there. They might get this defuse if they try and hold it. Cajun has to come back in. He's already on the bomb. He gets the first, but does he get him in the smoke? The He's still defusing. The time. He He's doesn't know the right position. Spot. Oh my goodness, Fnatic and fires at the wrong spot. JW Lean doesn't exist in CS, but he was basically in the right position off the mark and TSM. That's that's the kind of moment too where you, where you start to tilt. You go for the spray through the smoke, you know where the bomb is, but you're just not connecting on the player. Talk about escaping defeat. That smoke Boy. forced the hand. The first kill goes on and oh my god. He had time. He had plenty of time to get that kill. He just couldn't find the angle. You almost want to be Kadian at that point, oh, running with the knife. Pronax, good position, but you guys just started running up the ladder. So Cajun B, they get the initial entry frag onto the A site. And again, all you can really do now with this AWP. Good forward position from Dupree as well. This will slow down rotators. So they actually flash it because they, or pardon me, smoke it because they saw that first flash. There's Crims back at home inside connector. Oh, they're, sm they're sniffing each other through the smoke. Dupree and Olaf, but Olaf's going to get the first vision there with the CZ auto. The bomb plant, it is down and ticking. Cajun B from inside a sandwich takes out two. But uh, the push is still coming in. Device, the exact last man left situation. standing with the Khalil, but the bomb, well, he takes out one, looking for the second. It's range. Olaf, no the smoke. time is this ticking. Is They're running out of time, and that's it. The round's going to go the way of TSM, and GG from map one. TSM, two maps in front here in the grand exact final. Exact same. How, how ironic almost that it's the exact same situation, but again, no smoke that time, so all he had to do is wait it. What a game from TSM. They start down 7-1, to one and they looked composed. That is, that's a whole other level. I mean, someone asked the question, I think it was on Twitter, if TSM can get over their problems with choking, and if they can fire like this all the time, is there a case for them to be world number one? I forget, I think maybe it was Thorne or Sir Scoot. Someone said no. I'm going to go ahead and shut them both up and say yes. That it was an amazing performance, and what a start to the series. Well, I hate to say it, man. You can't shut him up. We're going to go back to the analyst with uh, Thorin with a very open mouth. Yeah, Thorin really enjoyed that comment, say the kiss. Well, they, they won a map, guys, so let's just crown them world champions already. Yeah, give, them, give, them the, give them the trophy, we'll here be we out go. of here. You don't even bother playing the rest here of the tournament, goes. yeah. Uh, hey, what, what's that sound in the distance? It's, oh, it's a bandwagon. Say the kiss is driving it, I think, there, guys. Okay, yeah, he's trying to get on the first bandwagon there. Yeah. I, I am going to get okay. on a bandwagon here now. I want to okay. remind you that I did say right at the top of the tournament, I oh, said yeah. I had a vision. And it was a vision of TSM winning a final okay. while the fans all beat you to death with Kappa signs because okay. obviously you're a, a TSM hater, well known for it, yeah. famous for it. And I think we're here, we're, we're witnesses to this evolution of TSM because that there was a situation where even a, you know, a couple of months ago, they would choke under that kind of pressure and they haven't they, they, done it here. They did kind of start to choke towards the end there. That's not a choke. device was an absolute tilt. I've never seen anything as bad. It's terrible because he was in a scenario where it, it's like he was caught between two decisions. Like, do I, do I just try and tap away and hope I kill him? Do I go in for it? And he was just, that indecision, it, it, it was kind of ridiculous because the flat guy shouldn't even have a chance to win there. He has to just straight defuse the whole time. You know, he can't get off the bomb. But in the big picture, you got to be sort of even proud about TSM and uh, how yep. they were down pretty big on their CT. Yeah. 
I mean, this is what I'm saying. How, how, how can Thorin sit there with a straight face or stand there with a straight face and say that they were choking when they actually battled back from being, you know, 7-1 down? No, I said that you can't say they didn't choke at all. At the end, there was a bit of choke starting to set in. Now, they'd done so much good work before that, they had the huge cushion. They could afford to let a couple of these rounds go amiss because they were going to get there anyway. Now, it's extremely, extremely rare that you would win a map against Fnatic like that when you give up that many rounds on your CT side. Because if Fnatic gets even one or two of their early CT rounds, they could just put a stretch together like they did at the end there. They could have put together eight or nine rounds and, and the game would just be over, you know. Yeah, and on the, on the contrary, uh, Fnatic, uh, you could see on that one round where um, TSM did a fake to A and went to B with the bomb, the over-rotation yep. towards the end of that second half. That's so uncharacteristic, you know, for yes. Fnatic as well. They're usually the team that has the good gamble on when to stay and when to make the call. And that was just a panic. Everyone just went to the side. Yep. And we got the stats uh, on screen for everyone at home. So let's talk about some yeah, of those the, players. Yeah, the big player I really want to point out here because it was so strange, was how ineffective JW was yeah. in the map. There's a point in the, yeah, yeah. there's a point in the map where he had maybe five kills. This is his playground, this yeah. map. In that window room, he just locks people out of that area completely. He makes highlight real kills. He couldn't do anything. It, it actually wasn't a case of like, oh, you know that old story I always said, like, yeah, it's got to be Device, he can be the best player for the team. It didn't really need him to be. The guy who really impressed me was actually Carrigan. Yeah. He was doing an insane job in that B-site B on... Um, on Mirage, obviously. Well, that, that was what I was going to ask you, Nati. Now, Carrigan, I think, has been absolutely brilliant, not just in terms of what he's posting statistically, but his reading of the game, his evolution and developing the tactics of TSM. Tell us about him and why this has been so important for him. Yeah, we're, like, it's been for quite a while now. Carrigan's been <laughs> probably not up on, their, on the board, but he has so many impact kills. And uh, just a player, again, we discussed before, he has so many talents, too. He's actually getting pretty good with that AWP on, on CSGO as well. So he's a very versatile and usable player for but TSM. But I, I want to draw your attention as well, what we were talking about backstage, when they did that fake. I mean, that was a textbook fake. You know, they, the five smokes were deployed. Fnatic bought it, hook, line, and sinker, rotated out. Yeah. I think that was for, to, to get them to 13 rounds. His execution of strats uh, uh, is incredible. Yeah, well, I mean, it is, again, something that the team does together, and uh, they all did a phenomenal job on landing all their smokes and flashes in, in a cor correct manner. But at the same time, it was a massive over-rotation for Fnatic as well. True, true. Uh, so, I mean, but yeah, he does a good job. Well, the one thing you could have said at the top of the show, I mean, I kind of did allude to this, is the one thing you would be certain of is, okay, well, we know Fnatic won't be the one to drop the ball. You know, TSM will have to come to their level and best them outright. It'll be like two great teams playing, or it'll be a Fnatic whitewash. Actually, Fnatic was having a great start to the game. That looked amazing. They're not even known, really known as a T-side team. They're known as monsters on CT side. But they were very, very weak on that CT side there. That, 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 like, you, like you were kind of mentioning there, just uncharacteristic stuff that you don't think of when you think of a classic Fnatic CT side. And on a, this, is, this should have been probably their best map of the ones here. Definitely. In terms of yeah. they're really good on it, but TSM hasn't been that good on it recently. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's amazing to think at the beginning of this tournament that at this point you can actually say TSM is on championship point in terms of the series to win the whole thing. Yeah. Meanwhile, Fnatic has to win three maps in a row, otherwise TSM's taking this title away. Yeah, and for me, it was like that's, uh, the way I saw these four maps going, I figured uh, Mirage that was definitely going to be Fnatic's map. Yeah, and absolutely. then Dust2, TSM's. So now that TSM already took Mirage, we could actually see a 2 nothing here. Well, just before we get into the rest of the uh, series and what that might mean, I do want to point out, because obviously he has a lot of people who do criticize him. There's been a few signs even in the crowd here. I want to talk about Flush's performance. Because I actually feel bad for him in this game because he didn't do anything wrong. He was playing out of his mind. Yeah. He was the big reason why they got to that crazy initial 7-1 lead on T-side. Yep. He was playing utterly unreal. Like... I usually, in fact, if you remember, there was a game yesterday on Mirage against NIP where I said, like, he's my X-Factor in terms yes. of if he lets the game down. Like, when he's playing in that B-site, well, if he he's, struggled if on he's that poor, map. then that's where it could cost Fnatic. But he was doing a great job today. Olaf Meister was pretty good. Yeah, the guy you really have to look at, unfortunately, it's JW yeah. because we expect him. It's not like he has to carry the game, but we just expect specific types of kills. And when he gets them, that's when they become that impenetrable defense. Yeah, JW Crims, if you think about the map match against uh, NIP last yes. night on Mirage, those two guys were huge on for, for Fnatic. And, uh, and they, on that map especially, they have the signature positions. You know, we think of, oh, they're always going to be like around CPL and near the connector. They just lock off the middle part of the map. They were the guys who were ineffective. And so as a result, TSM just waltzed in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so you said, Nartu, that they're going to take us too. So I guess we're going to have a real short final. <laughs> Tell me why you think that's the case. Um, well, I mean, it is a go-to map for TSM, been for a while. And uh, it seems, like watching last night, you saw Cajun B like, really locking that short area from Long Car and doing a phenomenal job at that. 
So it really is up to Fnatic to play some really good tactics and uh, really flash out all those, because they're probably going to run a double off. That's yeah. if they get the opportunity. So then it's going to come down to Fnatic using, using flashes, using smokes, and timing everything spot on. Otherwise, I think the AWPs from TSM are going to capitalize. And we've talked about how you know Mirage is usually JW's playground. Dust 2 is usually Device's playground. Yeah, this is actually probably, I think, the best map for Device. And it, this is because it's so open. He can use all the weapons. He's a guy where, in terms of his skills, he's one of the most complete players, actually. I think if, if he had, hadn't had this choking issue, if his team had had more success, I think we'd think of him like an Olaf Meister. It's that sort of the complete package type player. So he could definitely be the difference maker for TSM here. Because on this map here, I actually think it's a bit worrying that JW is doing badly for Fnatic. Because in the games they had when they lost to the TSM in the upper bracket, he was on fire, he was doing great, and yet that couldn't actually even make, bring them close to winning the series. So if he's not even doing well, now I'm a bit concerned. But yeah, it's also the fact that Crims has kind of just been a bit average. Yeah. He wasn't terrible, but he was just okay. Well, a telling yeah. statistic here, if this does carry on over, obviously I know it's a different map, but you can see there that Device didn't get a single uh, first kill. And obviously he is the guy that they will be relying on to get entry picks on Dust2 on the, on the T side. Uh, I mean, is that some extra pressure on him? Are we going to see some of the old demons get you know resurrected <laughs> i don't think so it is a positional thing it's um it, it's just the uh, uh i think the circumstances on the rush just maybe doesn't allow him to get a lot of first kills but for me and us too i would also look at cajun b like i pointed mm. him out um a phenomenal job on on a especially on their ct side he's a instrumental player for for tsm okay well we're going to get to just two in a second but now i'm uh, now i hope they're going to let me do it uh, <laughs> right so as i said there was a fan earlier he came up and he brought us this yeah. And it's uh, a monkey in a palm tree, apparently, made out of balloons, which we're going to give to Thorin. Here you go. That's for you, mate. All right. right. See, so I would just pop this, but that would be obnoxious. <laughs> so that's yeah, yeah. And, and the odd, and yeah. anything. But that's a metaphor also. You know. <laughs> so, yeah. so what we're going to do is we are going to uh, take a break, and we'll see if TSM can get the monkey off their back and finally win a tournament. Yeah, yeah. See I'll, I'll see if I can do that as well. <laughs> <laughs> Great talk to you guys. Yeah. We're, uh, we're going to cut to five minutes or so of highlights, and uh, then we will see you then for this uh, grand final of the PGL CSGO Championship Series. Don't go too far. Running in on him, Cajun B, Flasher takes one, needs a second, looking for the head, oh! he takes it! Flasher with a three for Again, low HP. He's got company this time with Pronax, and he's got the Galil. SMG comes out on top. KGB picked that up on the rotation, and it's one-on-one. -on -one. Jumps over top, flush and not hit from the first bullet. Advantage goes the way of movement mechanics wow. with Cajun B, and he time. takes full advantage, but no kit. And I'm no not time. sure he's fully got this. No, this not at all, not even close. So, Fnatic get away with the round. Pronax causing issues. They're already on the B side while Flush is playing this mid-battle against TSM. They just want to get up and find some kind of rifle or weapon, but they can't do it. He has gone forward of it, but he's got to be so careful. And there's one. Can he get more? He does. That's a gift. Thank you very much, Crims. I'll take your AK and the bomb. Down top of the side. He knows there's another one. Now he does hit onto Crims. Looking for that hit. Finally, he can take down Pronax and Carrigan. Going big with this off. Flusher reveals the position for Carrigan. Fnatic. Yeah, they're coming in with pressure, but Zipnix can't hold the line. He's got Carrigan there. I would claim the second of the third man that was pushing in. And it actually takes Olaf. Point blank. Looks for JW. Takes another set. Now it's only one player left. Fnatic is the best position for Zipnix. Taking two. Pronax just spraying through. He's on the side. There's no more time. He can't do anything apart from the defuse.